I was having a look yesterday in the garage in my craft store and I came across this pile of little sort of mini cards and then I realised that I had actually told some people quite a while ago that I would either make a video or do a blog post of this so it's very very simple and it'll probably take two or three videos to actually get through it all but it's just giving you some ideas of where you can go from starting off with a plain white or a plain coloured uh, square card and then these are actually it's 34 at the moment but I have another few that I could do 34 different ideas if you're ever stuck or have crafters block and you're wanting to start off with a plain square card you can follow this and if you have any questions or anything like that anything you want to ask or anything you'd like me to talk about in more detail just leave a little message in the comments down below and I'll try to add it into my next video so at the moment here we are these are mini cards just because when I was doing demos I used to take these around with me and um, and they didn't take up as much room as the full sized card so that's just why they're, they're this size but first of all I want to show you some plain square cards so whether you're starting off with now these could be 6 by 6 inches by 6 inches or 7 by 7 or 8 by 8 or whatever the card itself is square you could start with a coloured one doesn't necessarily have to be white or a patterned card or a textured card. Now if you're starting with either of these three I would probably not cover up just so much of it. I'd let a little bit more of the actual card base be shown. So I shall just let Nico down. He's getting a bit excited because there are treats on the... Here Nico, come on. There are treats on the table and there you are. He's going to go and give me space to get cleared up and show you some cards. So I should say before I start that the actual cards that I found that reminded me of this were, are actually quite old. I've had some of them in my box for about eight, maybe nine years I think. Probably some of these actually appeared in uh, Crafts Beautiful magazine a lot of years ago, 2012 or 2013 I think from the label on the box. So I'm not actually showing you papers that you could get now or anything, it's just the ideas for the actual card itself. So six by six square card and just layered on and what I want to show here is that um, I think it's always better whenever you're putting the layers on to have some kind of an outline it looks a bit more professional if you don't just put plain card onto plain paper onto plain card um, like this one has matting and layering and this one while it doesn't have the matting, matting and layering it has a line I hope you can see it there a line defining the edges which I've just done with a fine tipped pen um, one of this type of thing here with a very fine nib on it so something like that just makes it stand out a little bit more uh, the other thing is that you could uh, these are front opening so that's number one in my little pile I'll just show you here number one is just a front opening and the number two then is a top opening card uh, sorry a top fold card so even that simple difference just by changing the orientation of your card from a side fold to a top fold I think just makes quite a little bit of difference. Then I have got a few here now this one is more or less flat because the images and the die cuts and things or punches are flat to the card and then on this one I have used dimensional foam or dimensional tape or something in behind there and just raised these elements up and as you can see then that makes that card look just a little bit different as well and this one's quite similar. I've actually drawn these myself I think if I, yep those are all my own Im images I think I drew all those years ago. Now I think the next thing that we've got to notice is the going from the square card just a very very simple change in it is um, now I have made this one from a four card instead of just having a, a normal card blank and just to change the shape of this slightly it's not very much but it will just give it a totally different look if I put the corners into a corner rounder you see here And then when you've got your card with the corners rounded on it, 
you want to be sure then that everything inside just fits nice and neatly as well and that wouldn't look right if these corners were pointy like this and sharp they want to you want those to match here so here's another little tip I don't often do this myself but I just done it to show you if you've got card and you're wanting to save some pieces of it for a further project later on and you don't have too much of it just take a craft knife and preferably a steel ruler and just cut away the inside and save that for something else. Now it's probably more important if you haven't got too much to use it on maybe mirror card or patterned paper or whatever. But I'm just going to go ahead here and um, shape the corners of these. Now, one thing just before I go on ahead is um, I usually cut the layers with um, half a centimetre difference so if this one is let me see I'll just measure it for you here if this one is 12 and a half centimetres square the one one size down then would be 12 centimetres square and that just leaves a little gap right round here which will show the layering off better for you and then I've done the same with this one I'll just round these and add all the elements across and show you how it looks whenever we've finished I was carrying on ahead with the card there and realised that I hadn't actually punched these corners so all I just did was take the, the corner punch again and while the card was closed punched off those corners and now it's got uh, rounded corners on all sides and, I, and there we are I have just added some twine on here and just where it naturally curved I put some glue in below it and then added two little pearls now the next thing I think I could do with this card just to make it slightly different again is these are all clean edges here so we could try use our scissors just to serrate the edges. I don't think I'll go ahead and do this but I'll show you it on a piece of card. Let me see if I've just got a piece of white card here to show you. So get the edge of your scissors and the edge of the card and hold it like this. Don't worry if it, if it um, tears slightly because a little distressing is really nice on the card so when you've got this done you could ink this as well and that gives a whole different look it uh, gives a more vintage style of card it's lovely on your patterned papers so if you can imagine even looks like that if you can imagine all these layers instead of being clean cut like this having these nice edges on them that's a totally different look again for that card. This is another little card that was in the box and I just want to show you how to add another little bit of dimension onto the front of the card just to give it another slightly different twist uh, and this can fold flat like so just to pop it into an envelope so if you're wanting to add a die cut or actually I, I think I drew these onto patterned paper and cut them out uh, printed them out then um, instead of having it flat I'll show you how to add this dimension so I've taken a piece of card here and it's 12 and a half centimeters by 12 and a half centimeters and I'm going to score that at one centimeter in from each side just pop turn it around there measure one and two now put that out of the road and then we shall just fold these back I shall get my little phone folder back there and there and there just keep those edges nice and crisp now what you're left with in the middle is th this panel and that's the piece that will be um, showing at the front of the card and that's the part that you'll add your image onto or your sentiment or whatever these pieces then the one centimeter is going to be the, the piece that's going to live, give you the dimension and the other one centimetre is where you'll put the glue so you can see it on that one 
these pieces here are glued to the front of the card and then whenever you set it on like this it'll sit up dimensionally and then you can just fold it over to one side or the other and they'll fold flat then for the card to fold to go into an envelope. Obviously these need to be exactly the same you know you can't have one centimeter here and two centimeters here because they need to, to fold flat whenever you put it to either one side or the other so these two need to be identical. And there you are another little twist. Lastly for this part of the video series I'm just going to talk a little bit about aperture cards. So any shape of die would be suitable I think but I've used a circle one for this. Oops. So there we are instead of having the plain fronted card I have cut a circle out and then put something in behind just to show it off nicely. So rather than have this and then you're wondering where to write you'd have to write on the back of that card there because there's nowhere in here only maybe the inside or along here I have done similar on this card I have cut an oval out of the card and then I've put a die cut across the front of it but then that meant that the inside of the card was quite bare and then you couldn't find anywhere to write on it so I've put a flap of embossed card on I just embossed that hope you can catch that in the light there um, and put a one centimeter fold at the top of it and attached it to the card so you can write whatever you want in here that folds down but you can see all of that through the aperture there so that's just another twist on an aperture card and instead of just using a plain outline die we can also use a patterned one this is an older Tonic Studios one and I have used the plain shape on the inside so that you can see it through the aperture but the aperture itself is actually patterned and that's particularly nice I think because it's very very delicate detail and it's really nice when the cards open there so there you are that's that one which leads me on to the last one for the aperture cards and um, when you have cut the aperture out with the die you could also put a bubble in so this is a, blis a blister, a heart shaped blister that you can get and put some sequins or whatever inside that's kind of tinsely, I can't remember the name of it, it's kind of confetti kind of stuff inside but there's all sorts of things and elements that you could put inside that and that's just another idea on an aperture card. I think that's, I'll keep these videos quite short and um, not add too many all in one and um, I'll be back again soon hopefully with some more ideas and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye on these or give me any suggestions of what sort of things you'd like me to cover I want to get my way through all of these cards here because I know they were really popular when I was out and about demoing and um, lots of people liked the idea of just having some ideas there for just times whenever you've got cards to make and you've got square cards in front of you and you think no, I just don't want to make that plain this time again. I'll just start with that card and do something a little bit different. Well, hopefully you'll find something here that you like, but there's lots of ideas already. And um, I'll be back soon with more. Thanks very much for joining me. See you soon. Bye.